Hey guys, today I'm going to walk you through how to appropriately approach record labels and publishing company executives, plus some Q&A from you guys. So don't go anywhere. Hey guys, welcome back to uh, another video and welcome into my studio. I'm currently working uh, on and producing the new Danielle Khalil record. It's going to be awesome. Can't wait to finish it. This What we're going through with the, the coronavirus has kind of stopped a little bit of that because we're at the point where Danielle needs to come in and do vocals, but we're not allowed to be near each other for social distancing and quarantining and all that. And she lives in Dallas, Texas. So it's making things a little difficult, but I'm doing what I need to do uh, to get all the different instrumentation right, the arrangements right, and even maybe doing a little pre-mixing as well. But welcome back to another video. I wanted to answer some questions that you guys have been sending me. I told you we were going to take a little bit different spin on the channel and get back to what we used to do. And here's our first video back at doing that. I get a lot of emails, a lot of DMs from you guys wanting to know different things about the business and the right way to approach things. So I thought, what better way than just answer some of your questions right here in a video. I said at the beginning that we were going to talk about how to appropriately approach record labels and publishing company executives. Now, there are a lot of different opinions out there. Uh, most of them, what I see is, oh, you know, don't send them anything, you know, unsolicited material, that whole kind of a thing. And yeah, if you go on most record label and publishing company uh, websites, you will see that they do not accept unsolicited material. Now, the first reason I want to talk about why they do that is especially publishing companies, record labels, yes. And to be real honest with you, the reason record labels do it is because they don't want you sending them anything. It's just, they just don't want your stuff. They figure if you're good enough, they'll find you. Um, publishing is a little bit different because if, if a songwriter that wrote for one of those publishing companies ever wrote something that was anywhere near or similar or had a similar hook or idea that your song had, then you could always come back and sue that publishing company and say, hey, you stole my song. So I get it. And, and I get both sides of it. You as the songwriter, you as the artist, you know, you want people to hear your things. You want the opportunity to go to the next level. And I also understand the record label and publishing company side of it because they don't want to get sued down the road. So it's, we're, it's, it's an intellectual property issue, and I get both sides of it. But somewhere in the middle is and has to have room for you being aggressive and taking charge. Think about over the years, how many stories have you heard from ultra successful songwriters and artists who just said, well, I just walked in and laid my demo down and everything worked out. Now, does that happen a lot of the time? No, that doesn't happen a lot of the time, but it would have never happened for those artists if they wouldn't have done that. This all comes from an email that I got and I'm gonna read the email and then I'm going to answer the question because it has to do with this specific point. And this email comes from Travis. He said, Steve, I just want to drop in and say thank you for all the information you provide. You're a hard hitter and a big inspiration. Thank you, Travis. Uh, I'm at a big pivotal moment in my life right now and have decided to move back to upstate New York. I still want to do the songwriting thing and will never give up on it. I have learned a lot of things living here in the past three years and have, that have led me to be able to make a great recording, write, sing, blah, blah, blah. And I'm at a point where I'm going to do whatever it takes just to get a, con a conversation going with a person with someone that's maybe affiliated with a publishing company. Would you say it's a good idea that I write down all of the publishing companies in town that I'm interested in, bring six songs with me and all my information on it, and physically bring it into these facilities? I'm at a point where I have nothing to lose and I want to be a little more aggressive, but in a smart way. I know these people deal with this shit every day and it would be annoying to me too, but it's something I've really, I've been really considering just to get the ball rolling. I'm not a needy person and would understand them turning it down, but I figure it might be worth a shot. Hoping you're staying safe with all of what's going on and God bless. Thanks, man. Sign, Travis. All right, here's what I want to tell you, Travis. I think that's a great idea. Now, 99.9% .9 of people are going to tell you that that's not a great idea to not bother these people, that there's a correct way. 
Let me give you the correct way that I would do it. I think the five or six songs is a great idea. First of all, you want to make sure that those five or six songs are radio ready quality, that they're not quote unquote demos. They need to sound like they belong on the radio right now to where when a publishing company executive or a creative director is listening to that song that you've brought them, they can already hear Keith Urban's voice on it, or they can already hear Carrie Underwood's voice on it because the production is right there. I've said it many times, remember, we don't have producers anymore. We have replicators. So much of what you end up hearing on the radio was the demo to begin with, or they're just copying what a great producer or great songwriter producer did with the demo to get the attention that got the song cut in the first place. That's step number one. Make sure that those demos are of the best quality possible that they could play on the radio right now with any artist's voice on them and it would fit right in production level, sonically and quality level with everything else that's currently on the radio. Now what I would do is yes, make a list of the publishing companies that you're interested in. Let me be honest with you, focus more on the smaller and independently owned publishing companies, not Warner Chapel, not Sony, n none of those, okay, Warner Brothers, you're kind of banging up against a brick wall there. They have hundreds of staff writers that write for them. And I understand that you might want to be one of those, but if the overall goal is to get your music heard and hopefully one of these companies puts you in a position to succeed, you're going to have a better shot with an independent publishing company. Now, I say at the end of my podcast, every single episode, there's nothing wrong with being independent. And there's not. So for all of you out there thinking you have to have a major publishing deal, you have to have a major label deal, you do not. If you want to be successful, you do not have to be affiliated with a major label or a major publishing company. That being said, make your list of people that you want to approach. Then make one go one step further, okay? Call that publishing company and ask who their creative director is. Now, when you get your package ready to send, whether it's your CD or, or, or whatever, and you want to take it and drop it off, make sure that you are addressing it to that person in particular. If you walk into a record label or a, publish, a publishing company and you say, I've got my demo and you just leave it at the front desk, it is going into the trash 35 seconds after you get back on the elevator or you walk out the front door. Now, that's not the receptionist's fault. That's not that they're horrible people. That's what they've been told to do. What you want to try to do is create a relationship. That's the first step. Identify who the creative directors are at these publishing companies that you want to target. Send them an email. Say, hey, my name's Travis. I'm a songwriter. I would just like some feedback on my songs and see if there might be any interest. Now, truth, you're probably not going to hear back, but maybe wait another week and then send another email. Maybe they do get back with you and they will tell you the submission policy that they really have in place that they want you to follow in order to get your music to them. Let's go under the assumption under the 99.9% .9 of the time rule, and that is that you're never going to hear back from them. Then take your CD along with a short one paragraph, even one to two sentence typed out or written out letter that just said, hi, my name's so-and-so, I'm a songwriter here in town, I would love for you to listen and let me know what you think. Here's what I'm looking for and make it over. It's got to be over. Don't take up a bunch of time explaining your life story to them or none of that. Get straight to the point. Take that package and deliver it to that creative director at that publishing company, okay? Now, a lot of people are going to tell you not to do that. I'm going to tell you that's what you need to do. Be aggressive. These are desperate times, and desperate times call for desperate measures, and they even go one step further, and it calls for a little bit of aggression. You have got to show that you want this. Sitting back and at expecting somebody to discover you or somebody to hear you at one of these bullshit writer's rounds in town, that's never going to happen. That never happens. Very, very rarely. You've got to get aggressive and get your music out there and get your music heard. Now, do it in the most respectful way possible. Like I said, find out who the, the person is, find out who the creative director is, Send them a series of a couple of emails, see if you can get a relationship going. If not, then you're at the last step, and that is I have no other choice. I'm taking the bull by the horns, my career by the horns, and I'm going to go drop this CD off to the appropriate person. Okay, that's how you want to handle that. Let me tell you, 
back in the 70s, maybe even late 60s, early 70s, Chris Christofferson landed a helicopter on Johnny Cash's front yard. That's how he got Johnny Cash's attention. And Johnny Cash and Chris Christofferson became friends, and the, the history goes on from there. The many songs that Chris Christofferson wrote for Johnny Cash, Sunday Morning Coming Down, just one. Okay, that's aggressiveness. Chris wanted his music heard and he knew who he wanted to hear it and he knew who needed to hear it. So he flew a helicopter and landed it on Johnny Cash's front yard. Okay, I'm not telling you to land a helicopter on the top of Sony ATV, but I am telling you to take this in your hands and do what is well within your power to be able to do to get your music heard. How many times have you guys heard me say, if you're new to the channel, this may be the first, write it down, have it tattooed on yourself. If it is to be, it's up to me. It's not up to this person, that person, a publicist, a manager. If it is to be, it's up to me. Don't be scared to be the best warrior for your songs, to be the best guy out there fighting. Come out swinging, do it respectfully, but take control of the situation and get those songs out there. So Travis, I hope that uh, answers your question. All right, next question we've got uh, comes from Astrid uh, Ripepi, I think is how you say it. And Astrid, if I said that wrong, I apologize. But this comes from Instagram. Astrid says, hi, Steve, uh, just discovered you on YouTube in the midst of my search on various distribution platforms. I came across your journey with Ditto. Sorry about that. Well, no, actually, I'm, I'm glad you came across it. Uh, I have a couple of questions. If you don't mind me asking, Astrid, I never mind asking. You want to ask? I'll do videos like this, and I'll answer them for you. Her first question was, when you experienced your issue due to them holding your revenue, was that from your first time you were due to take out your balance? No. Um, what happened, and I may not have said this very clearly in the Ditto video, um, I just woke up one morning about two weeks after we had put the releases up to find out they were down and I got that email from Ditto. Um, so I am the first thing I did is naturally anybody would do. I logged into my tried to log into my account with Ditto and my account was shut down. So the next step I made was I called each one of the artists that pro, the, their projects were removed and I explained, here's what's going on, we're gonna get it fixed, uh, we're gonna take it over to our regular distributor, Universal, and we'll have everything back up, I'm sorry for the inconvenience. Then we got into it with Ditto. So no, I, I wasn't going in trying to remove my money. Um, we do subscribe to SoundScan, so I knew exactly how many units had been sold. Um, but when, I, in all honesty, when I was logging in, my thought was, okay, I need to, to, to get the money out of there. But I couldn't even log into my account because they had already shut it down. Her question number two, you mentioned you didn't accept Ditto's offer to give your money back. I assume it was referring to the single EP submission fees. Did Ditto eventually grant you access to your account to withdraw your balance? No. So Ditto, that representative from Ditto, finally after all three videos and it was really blowing up and it was becoming a thing, uh, they re did reach out to me and you can see that in the video and offered to give me their highest level of record label in a box and refund me all the money that we had spent for the EP and album uploads on these three or four projects that we had used Ditto for. Um, and I told them no that I wasn't interested in taking them up on their offer, that I was not gonna be using them as a distributor anymore, um, that we were gonna go through our regular distributor, that you know somebody had asked me to try out Ditto. I had never used Ditto before. Somebody in LA said, hey, I think you should try this out. So we were, uh, we were doing artist development for some artists, and we th I thought, okay, this is a perfect time. Uh, because when you have a major distribution deal like we do, there's a lot of red tape to get the releases out and marketed and, and up. And I thought, you know what? These artists are new artists. The most important thing is that their music is just available now. So I thought it was a great opportunity to test Ditto out with their releases. And then many of you have seen the video and all hell broke loose. Um, but no, they never gave me access to my account again. And matter of fact, after I turned down their offer, they never communicated with me again. Because of course, in my follow-up email to her, I did say, I was like, uh, speaking of, uh, no, I'm not gonna take up on this offer, but you owe us X amount of dollars 
for these sales that had come through from iTunes and uh, Google Play and and you know all the other all the other digital sales outlets. Um, they never got back to me. Uh, they never reinstated my account, and no, they never paid us um, f- uh, what they owed us. Now, very fortunate for us, this happened like it wasn't even three weeks. Um, after two of the projects, it had been a couple of weeks since we had uploaded. One of them, um, we had literally uploaded on a Tuesday, and they pulled everything down on a Friday morning. So we weren't talking about a lot of money here. Um, you know, it was maybe a couple thousand dollars. Uh, it was not. It was not a lot. Um, but despite that fact, it could have been thirty-five cents for all I care. No, they never gave us access to our account and never gave us our money back. I talked to two different lawyers, two of my lawyers that I use in the music business all the time. And they, because Ditto is, is uh, headquartered in the UK, we would have had to have hired a lawyer in the UK. And, and again, we're talking, we're, we're talking, and I'm not trying to belittle $2,000, $2,500. To some people, that's a lot of money. But it was going to cost us $100,000 to go try to get the $2,500 back. So I just gave the money to the artists. I knew, Like I said, we had SoundScan. We knew exactly how much we had sold. So I just gave that money to the artists. And we re-uploaded all of our projects back through Universal and have never had another problem again. Sales are going great. Streams are going great. We're still implementing all of our normal marketing uh, materials and advertising that we do with Facebook and Instagram and Spotify, and things are going great. Um, Let's see. She said, I'm currently shopping around again for a new distribution platform to release my music. My current music is with CD Baby, so I'm very curious as to why CD Baby are not your first choice. Can you pretty please do an episode in regards to that? Thanks in advance, Astrid. All right, so many of you guys have asked me across the many videos that I've done on digital distribution, whether it be about TuneCore or whether it be about DistroKid or even Ditto or the latest where I'm highly recommending one RPM uh, to everyone. If you're a more established artist, my my recommendation is either one RPM or um, AWOL through Cobalt. Uh, It's a little bit more stringent getting a partnership with AWOL. so that's going to be more for your your more established artist. You've been around. You've got to track history of sales, and or a lot of stream numbers. Um, they're going to be more for you. But one RPM I think is great, and that's who I'm pushing to everybody now. So that being said, everybody wants to know, Steve, what is your problem with CD Baby? Here's my problem with CD Baby in a nutshell. I think CD Baby. The companies that do digital distribution well are the companies that just focus on digital distribution. What I don't like about CD Baby is that they try to push all of these other services, promotional services, royalty um, payment uh, services, publishing administration, Spotify playlist promotion, uh, radio promotion, all of these other services that will not work. Instead of just being a great digital music distributor, they want to push all these other services on you. Now, all of the other ones, Ditto, DistroKid, TuneCore, they all offer those same services. But especially TuneCore 1 RPM and the other upper echelon digital distributors, their first and foremost responsibility and mission statement as what they do as a company is distribute your music. That is not the case with CD Baby, okay? CD Baby wants to become your record label in a box, if you will. They want you to don't just distribute your music through them. They want you to pay for radio promotion or Spotify promotion or social media marketing, uh, publishing uh, administration, royalty acquisition. They wanna do all those things that you can do by yourself. You don't need them to do that. You don't need to pay other people to do that. When it comes to your royalty, administration, publishing administration, you can affiliate directly with ASCAP or BMI. I'm a CSAC writer and a CSAC publisher. Um, CSAC, I've talked about this in the past, is, is a private organization. You have to be invited to join CSAC. But BMI and ASCAP are available to any composer, songwriter, producer, anybody that wants to join can join. 
You don't need a company like CD Baby to collect your royalties uh, for you. You can affiliate directly with one of the other PROs, and as long as they have your address and your bank account information, they will collect those royalties for you, and they will put them right in your bank account or send you a check every quarter. So that's my issue with CD Baby. I also like to kind of stay up with what the latest is and what what are the companies the movers and shakers in the company in the in the this space right now cd baby was great for independent musicians 10 years ago 15 years ago when you didn't have any other options when there there wasn't tunecore and all these other places to get your music on the itunes store okay that has long passed um, and now, because there are so many better options out there, CD Baby has come up you know, with all of the DIY musician stuff. And I'm not saying that that's not helpful. It is helpful. But they're not really a digital music distributor. They are trying to be an all-in-one source for independent artists to have access to all of these different services, label-type services, which I'm telling you, just being truthful with you. As an independent artist, you're not going to get on the radio. As an independent artist, you're not going to get featured in the top echelon of Spotify playlists. There are companies that do handle that and do that very well and are very professional. There may be three companies that I, that I choose and that I have used in the past that are reputable, and I know that because the only other people they work with are major label artists and are affiliated with major labels, and you have to have the right song at the right moment for them to say, I think we can get this thing placed, and here's how much it's gonna cost. Most of these companies just, they're open to anybody. If you've got the money, you, they'll take your money and they'll work the single for you. That is not gonna get you anywhere. The companies that I'm talking about that I like to use for different services like that, for the artists that I produce or that I develop, I know they have integrity in the business that they're in, and I can't tell you the number of times that I've sent over a project and they've gotten back with me and said, look, this artist is phenomenal, this record sounds great, but with what's going on with these playlists right now, they're adding more of this, this, and this type of music, and we don't feel like right now we could get this placed where you're gonna have expectations of it being placed. Therefore, we're not going to take your money right now. As things start to shift and start things start to change and the playlist styles and the music that they're adding to the playlist evolves a little bit, then we'll let you know and we might come back to it and and say, okay, let's try now to get this particular artist or this song placed on a playlist. I'm not big on these companies that just work for anybody that has the money. Um, I look at that almost just like buying Facebook followers, buying Instagram followers, buying likes, any of that. It's all perception and it does no good whatsoever. I really want you guys to be successful. There is nothing that one of these other bullshit companies that will take your money to get your single on some meaningless 55 playlists on Spotify that nobody listens to. You can do that yourself. We have a full course through the Artist Development Academy on monetizing your music that walks you through exactly how to get your music on the playlist that you really want it on there. So if you want to check that out, go to artistdevelopmentacademy.com and check that out. There's so many different resources that, again, going back to what we were talking about in the very beginning, if you take the bull by the horns and you take control, if it is to be, it's up to me. And if you take that approach with it, there is nothing that a booking agent, there's nothing that a manager, there's nothing that a record label or a, or a publishing company can do that you don't have the power to do yourself. It just matters and makes a big difference of how much you're willing to work for it and how much of yourself you're willing to interject into the process. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you like this kind of Q&A kind of thing, please, like the video, subscribe to the channel, make sure that you click the bell icon and select all notifications so that you get a notification every time I upload a new video. And we'll do more of these Q and A's. I kind of enjoy it. Until then guys, keep being creative, keep pressing the boundaries, and there's nothing wrong with being independent. See you in the next video.